So this evening, we're going to be focusing on the Kells College of Business at Pittsburgh State, and there are many, many exciting things that are going on. Um, we have really uh, tried to embrace the opportunity to have virtual gatherings that were focused on specific areas on campus uh, throughout the semester, and we're going to do the same thing next semester as well. And, you know, the silver lining um, of not being able to see people in person is that we can really hone in and focus on these, uh, these specific programs and in, invite everyone and people who are interested will show up and, and people who aren't interested in that uh, can attend another one. So uh, this has worked pretty well for us. Um, naturally, we would rather be with you in person. Uh, Dr. Grimes and I were talking about what's for dinner tonight. And um, I, I'm sorry that I don't have Southeast Kansas fried chicken for you, but I could ask you to close your eyes and just imagine the smells of uh, that chicken Annie's chicken and the, the garlic and, and um, all those different smells <laughs> that we associate with it that, that uh, many of us love. So uh, unfortunately, that's the, best, that's the best that I can do. Um, we have been taking, actually taking fried chicken uh, to some of our constituents in uh, some of our areas that are uh, close enough to campus that we can uh, throw a hundred dinners or so in the car and drive them there. We actually had 350 dinners in Kansas City uh, that we took up there last month. So trying to trying to stay connected with our alumni and our friends uh, during during these uh, these crazy times. So uh, thank you though for taking time out of your schedule um, to be here tonight. Um, we are primarily going to focus on business tonight. I will say a few brief words at the end about alumni and constituent relations, but uh, very excited to uh, have uh, two individuals from our Kells College of Business with us tonight. Um, first and foremost, our Dean, Dr. Paul Grimes. And the, the great thing too is Dr. Grimes and Dr. Murray, um, who I'll introduce in a moment, they're both gorillas too. And uh, that's, even, that's even more fun. Uh, when we have folks in these positions, but they also know what it's like to be a student here at Pittsburgh State. I always like to say that they're one of us. And so we'll hear from uh, Dr. Paul Grimes here in a little while, but we're actually going to kick things off tonight with uh, Dr. Lynn Murray. And uh, Lynn and I were actually graduate assistants in the admission office together about 20 years ago. And um, so uh, I've known Lynn for a long time, and, and she went off and finished her PhD and, and came back to Pittsburgh State and we certainly love it when people do that. And so Lynn's position now, she's the associate, she's an associate professor in marketing, but she's also the director of outreach and business engagement. I had to write all that down so I got the title right. But um, Lynn has done marvelous things on our campus for many years, but that's her current title. So um, Lynn, I'm gonna go ahead and, and uh, turn it over to you if you wanna go ahead and unmute and uh, start your portion of the presentation and then we'll hand it over to uh, Dr. Grimes. One thing that I do want to mention, though, is if you have questions for our speakers uh, throughout the evening, um, since there are so many of us on the call, the easiest thing to do would be to submit them in the chat mechanism. And then I will make sure that those questions um, are relayed to our speakers uh, before the end of the night. So go ahead and uh, feel free to ask any questions in the chat, and I'll make sure that they see them. So uh, without further ado, I'll turn it over to Dr. Lynn Murray. Good evening, everybody. It's great to see you. I saw a few familiar faces, um, some recent grads and some a few years out. It's very nice to see you and a couple that I went to school with as well. So um, welcome. Um, Dr. Grimes is going to follow up with uh, after I talk. Uh, I'm going to focus primarily on some of the programs we're working on here at Kells, things that are moving us forward into the 21st century. Um, things that are helping our students and helping uh, both current and future students and helping Kels in the long run. Dr. Grimes is going to follow up with the bigger picture items, uh, including that all-important question about uh, the new building. So <clears throat> um, what I'm going to talk about today is our, uh, our new professional sales certificate, and we have a professional selling center as well. We're going to talk about entrepreneurship and curriculum issues there, and then some continuing education and professional development um, initiatives that we've started working on. And then near and dear to my heart are our women in business efforts. 
Our professional sales certificate is, um, it began this fall. It's open to any Pitt State student, Dr. Johnson. Um, it requires 15 credit hours. There are three courses that are required, principles of marketing, uh, professional, personal selling and sales management, and then professional selling and negotiation. And then we tie that in with um, students can select from a, a few electives that, and they need two of those. There's a huge demand for salespeople um, and we want to really improve our student skills coming out to really give them an edge in, in the job market. High demand, this is a high demand area. According to uh, Growth Development Associates, there are about 24,000 open accounting jobs, about 90,000 jobs in the, in the country um, that are open in computer information systems, software development, um, computer operations. There are nearly 1 million jobs in sales that are open right now. Um, and there are 1.2 million in customer service and support areas. So it's a high demand area. It's a, it's a lucrative area. Our students, uh, our people in those who succeed in those roles make quite a lot of money. Um, and we think we can help them really develop those skills and give them a leg up on those jobs and their careers going on. It's not only, um, not only uh, does it provide our students with benefits, we also will be working with uh, local and regional companies in helping them develop their sales forces, whether it's from hiring our graduates or helping them with sales training. And then it also provides, the center will also provide opportunities for our, um, for our faculty and, and um, colleagues from across the country to work on, uh, on research and sales to help move the field forward. Kansas Board of Regents approved this center in October, and currently right now we're developing a board of advisors um, to help us manage that. So if you're in sales and are interested in that, I have my contact information at the end of the presentation. Be sure and let me know. We'd love to have your input on that. Um, the uh, entrepreneurship. This is something that we've kicked around for a long time. I know when I was an undergraduate here in the 80s, uh, there was a big initiative uh, for entrepreneurship, and it just never really quite gains a lot of traction. Uh, we're really focusing on this as a, as a new initiative over the next few years. We, I recently conducted a survey um, in, uh, in our learning management system, and it's all business undergraduates in KELS, and I asked them if uh, they were interested in an entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship course or startup course. 18% of them said yes, or 18 of them said yes, 21 said maybe, and only four said no. And I realize these are all self-selected in, but we think that's a big driver um, that there are a lot of students who are interested in ultimately owning their own business or managing their careers as entrepreneurs or having that entrepreneurial mindset. To that end, last fall um, in October of 19, we hosted an event, uh, it's a, it was a workshop called Three Day Startup. There's a company out of Dallas, a nonprofit that worked with us on that. We had 27 students participate in that and it was a three day boot camp, and they covered um, idea generation. They covered, uh, they went out and talked to people on the streets about their ideas. They pitched their ideas to local and regional entrepreneurs and got feedback. Um, but they really developed those ideas. We had planned to do it again in May during in between terms um, at intercession, but of course it got canceled. Uh, we are planning on developing a class around that three-day startup for this May. And then ultimately we'd like to develop a, a certificate program or a minor um, in entrepreneurship or startup plans uh, to really help, um, help those students who are interested in that area develop some skills. Continuing education, um, one of the th opportunities that we have is to continue, none of us ever stop learning and we wanna help be that partner for both local and alumni um, and regional to continue to develop skill sets. And we began to partner with um, Wichita State Center for Management Development. And uh, last spring, we had planned to bring a series, a certificate program in um, management to, uh, it was, it's a non-credit course here to campus. Of course, that got canceled in April with COVID. Um, this spring, we'll schedule um, a session in uh, February, March, or April 
um, about dealing with women's leadership or communication skills. We think that's a great opportunity for us to really engage with the community and um, really give back um, to our, our partners out, out in, the, uh, in the community. <clears throat> and finally, near and dear to my heart, um, tying in with uh, the Center for Management Development and the women's leadership is our women in business. Um, we've noticed over the last five or six years a very disturbing trend in that we're seeing fewer and fewer women enroll in business majors. If you, uh, whoop, sorry, going backwards. Um, if you'll note, uh, 18 winter fall, which is the most recent data we have available. This is public data, by the way. In the undergraduate, we're at just under 38% of our, of our undergraduates are women. And that's a trend that's been happening for at least five or six years, if not longer. And we're really concerned about it. And we, we haven't really grabbed a hold of any reasons why. Um, but there are some things we want to do. We really want to focus at multiple levels. We want to um, we want to look at high school and, and K through 12, um, particularly high school. We want to focus on college women. We want to focus on our alumni, um, both who are uh, more recent graduates as well as those who are more established in their careers. So one of the things that we want to do in March, um, COVID permitting, is to offer a multi-generational workshop luncheon um, day for, for women and bring high school and college students together as well as some of our alumni um, at, who are more recent grads and then those more senior women in business as well and um, provide some information for them, some networking opportunities, some learning opportunities, and that opportunity to really see what their lives can be like, those college and high school students. Uh, and we're, we're excited about that. Um, and again, that will be in March. Uh, March is Women's History Month, so we think it ties in really nicely uh, with that. And I promised my contact information. So if you're interested in the sales center or participating in our Women in Business event, just give me an email or give me a call and I'd be happy to, uh, happy to answer any questions or get you involved in that. Are there any questions specifically for Dr. Murray? I didn't see any come through on the chat, but you well, could ask now. <laughs> or you can save it for later, and that's fine too. Thank you, Dr. Murray. Appreciate you. you. So we will transition here to our Dean, Dr. Paul Grimes. And uh, Paul, I'll unmute you. Maybe. All right. I think um, unmute it, John. Yes, you are. All right. And have we unshared the screen? Yes. Uh, yeah. All right. Let me. Share my screen then with everyone. You pick the right screen. Right there. All right. Can everybody see that? Yes, sir. All right. Well, like Lynn, um, I'm very happy to be here tonight. And I was looking through that list of everyone who signed up and RSVP'd. And it was so cool to see so many familiar names. And now I get to see familiar faces and uh it was so nice to see such a diversity of folks. You know, as Lynn mentioned, we've got folks who just graduated a year or two ago and folks that graduated even before I did. Uh, so it's really wonderful to have you all here. Thank you so much for your support of Pittsburgh State University and the Kells College of Business. So I'm going to talk about some uh, big, big picture items for the college. And, you know, we've been kind of shut up for the last six to eight months or so. And, uh, but when I do get out, there are really three or four questions that everybody asks me about the college. And so I'm gonna try to, to hit those. So the things that people ask me about are always about how, how's enrollment going? How are you guys responding to the COVID situation? What's going on with the, the new online MBA program? And then of course, everybody wants to know about the uh, the, the building renovation and expansion effort. So those are the those are the items that I'm going to talk about tonight. So we got some really good news about 
the NBA. I want to start with that, right? We always start with the good news. So this week, the uh, Wichita Business Journal uh, presented their annual list of MBA programs in the state of Kansas. And so this is a clipping from their ranking. And I hope everybody will notice that there at the very top is Pittsburgh State University, number one in the state of Kansas. And we are ranked here uh, based on uh, total enrollment. And that is primarily due to the uh, online MBA, which started uh, about two, two years ago next month. And uh, we have grown that. And you'll see that our total enrollment in both our traditional and our online MBA currently stands at about 347, uh, four students ahead of that bigger school up the road, KU, um, and ahead of the, uh, the other big players in the MBA market, Emporia State, Baker, Ottawa, Wichita State, and K-State. So right now, uh, we do have the largest MBA program uh, overall. And it's really, really great to get a ranking number one in our home state. So as you know, uh, the MBA program, the Kells College of Business has been ranked by a number of entities over the years. And the other ranking that we achieved this year, I didn't put it on the slide, but uh, this is one that uh, you can see a little more information on the web. It's the most family friendly uh, ranking, which is put out by the Princeton Review. And once again, this year, we made the top 10 in the nation for the most family friendly MBA. And what that means is that, that we uh, are, we have policies and procedures that are conducive to students who have families that are trying to come back to school and work on their graduate degree. So this year we ended up number six in the top 10 and we're, we got really good neighbors right next to us. We're right ahead of the University of Michigan, which is at number five. And uh, well, yeah, we're right below the University of Michigan, which is at number five, but we're right ahead of an Ivy League school, Dartmouth College at number seven. So that, that's great. And uh, obviously that's all due to the hard work of the faculty and staff here in the, in the college business. We certainly appreciate their efforts and we enjoy receiving these rankings and accolades uh, from the press. So that's, that's the MBA. And I'll say a little bit more about enrollments here in just a second. Um, but I wanted to uh, talk a little bit about uh, how we've reacted to the COVID situation. As, as everybody knows, we all had to pivot last spring, come back after an extended spring break and finish the semester online. So all of the faculty, um, you know, move their courses from their traditional approaches to an online format and finish out the spring. And then this fall, uh, we ended up offering courses in a variety of different ways. And we spent most of the summer trying to figure out how to do that. And I can't tell you how much time and effort folks around here put into making this happen. And Lynn, in fact, led one of the task forces here in the college that figured out how we could make our classes work for our face-to-face -face classes and uh, just get everything arranged and set up in the building to make it as safe and easy for us to, to do the job that uh, we need to do. So what I've got here on this slide is you can kind of see how the mix of courses played out this fall. If you look at the bottom line there, the overall portfolio, we offered 127 different courses uh, this fall. 42% of them were face-to-face, -face, but they weren't offered in the same capacity that they normally would be offered because we had to reduce the capacity of our classrooms and juggle things around. So uh, it was face-to-face, -face, but everybody is socially distanced in the room, six feet apart. Uh, very luckily, the band had moved out of the building and we were able to take the old auditorium and create a large classroom space in there. And we can actually fit about 60 students in that 2000 square foot space in a socially distanced manner. And that really saved us having, having the band out of the building. And then we have uh, online, a little bit less than the 42% face-to-face. Online ended up at about 40%. So pretty well balanced between those two. And then the hybrid and the high flex, those are some combination of online and face-to-face. -face. Hybrid, it would be normally where you're spending maybe one day face-to-face -face and another day 
uh, online, uh, high flex, some combinations of different ways of doing it. And there's all kinds of different formats. Faculty have been very creative in the way to teach their classes to, to get the job done. So I'm really proud of the faculty and staff for making this semester work. I can't tell you how much effort they have put into it. And everybody has pitched in to make sure that this has happened. And if you don't know, this is finals week. The last finals are tomorrow. So we have made it through the fall semester, something that not every university in the country can say that they did, but we have made it through. And I think it's due to all of the, the effort and hard work that folks put in. So that's kind of the way the uh, portfolio classes look like, very different from our normal um, approach and delivery of courses. But overall, I think it was a very successful semester. And uh, I've seen the uh, layout for the way we're gonna start the spring semester and will look very similar to this. The format will be about the same. The portfolio mix will be about what you see here. All right, so the other question I always get is, and why does this not want to move? There we go, uh, enrollments. So as you know, the university peaked in its enrollment about six years ago. So back in 2014, we had about 7,400 students on campus. And these numbers on the chart here, these are for fall semesters of the years in question. So back in uh, 2014, we had about 1,105 students uh, in the Kells College of Business. And you'll see that it's broken down. Uh, about 90% of them were undergraduates and 10% were graduate students. And 2019, last year, uh, you can see that we took, we took a drop. Uh, we were following the trend of the rest of the campus with lower enrollments. But, and that's at the undergraduate level, but notice that the graduate degree numbers were up and that's because of the professional online MBA program. And so last year we had grown from about 100 traditional MBAs to over 270 traditional plus online MBA students. And now again, this year, even with COVID, we've got uh, almost, we're approaching 400, we're at 376. Uh, when these numbers were pulled from the system. So if you look at our overall number of students across all degree programs, even though the university is down, we're you know, relatively flat and actually in, it, we're up. Uh, we're up uh, over six years by 6% and we are up over last year by two and a half percent. So we got good news while the uh, rest of the the campus cannot say they've experienced uh, what we have experienced. It, what we have done, we've, we've had a change in the mix of our students. You'll see that dramatic decline in the undergraduate students. And we were fortunate in the timing of our online MBA uh, to capture some of that enrollment loss back in the form of graduate students. Now, of course, it's very different. Those are two different types of students, right? The undergraduate students are here on campus full time and those online students, they're very rarely on campus. And when they are, they're just part-time students. And so it's a very different uh, sort of mix. It's changing the culture a little bit, but overall uh, it's been healthy for us in terms of being able to maintain enrollments in this uh, very challenging economic environment in which we find ourselves. So I wanted, I wanted to be transparent and share those numbers with you. Uh, do what you can to help us get those undergraduate numbers back up to where they need to be. Those are our bread and butter students, just like most of us were. And uh, we wanna share that experience with the next generation of business gorillas. So we would love to get those numbers back up. Do what you can to help us. We're all recruiters. All right. So I wanna talk about transforming our, our future. Let's talk about the building and the renovation project real quickly here. So we're currently at the 90% stage of construction documents. I've got a big stack of blueprints over here on my table that uh, I'd love to be able to share with you if you wanna stop by sometime. Um, the project is estimated at about $18.5 million, the last time we put it out for uh, consideration. Um, and of that, we've got about $12 million identified uh, through private gifts and state repair and renovation funds. And I know there are a number of people on the call tonight that have made donations that are part 
of that $12 million. And I want to thank each and every one of you. All these donations are making a difference. They're moving us closer to our goal. So we're about two thirds of the way there. Uh, and I'll talk a little bit about this uh, a little bit more, but I do want to mention that we uh, have that, that pot of money is anchored by a $3 million lead gift and another million dollar donation. And of course, what we're working on is we're going to change that building right there. I don't know how many of you on the call can uh, recall the building looking like that, but we want to change it from what it was to what it is today to what it could be in the future. Those are some of our original drawings right there. And here's a more um, finished rendering of what we're projecting. So we're going to rip off the front of the building, build a new front, extend it out, uh, create some lovely, modern, functional spaces for our students. So that would be the view if you're looking at uh, the building from Cleveland Street, right out the windows behind me here, looking toward my, toward my office. So I'll just look just real quickly, just flip through the, the floor plans here. That's the first floor, which is primarily administration, classrooms. Very importantly, though, it's student space. Uh, the front of the building is the large student commons area where they can gather and interact. We have team rooms along the front. You'll notice the big old auditorium is turned into a lecture hall. We'll have two new big large lecture learning labs right across what we're calling the Great Hall there. The key defining feature of the building is an atrium and courtyard right in the center of the building with a coffee shop and classrooms off of it and uh, other, other spaces. We'll have a new entrance there on the east side of the building uh, where folks can come in as well as for the front where uh, folks are normally coming in right now from, from the, uh, the, the Oval. Then upstairs is primarily office space. We're not going to have segregated departmental offices. We are now a faculty of the whole. And so we're going to have a faculty commons or faculty community where all the faculty, regardless of what they're teaching, will be housed. Everybody will have an individual office along the front. The graduate students are get, going to get the best view. They're going to get to look out over the, uh, over the green space in front of Russ Hall, look out the front of the building. All that space along the front there is for graduate students. We'll have medium sized classrooms there in the back. Uh, if you got your orientation, that's where the old accounting suite uh, currently is right now. Uh, there'll be overlooks to the atrium below, which will give it a nice airy feel. There will be team rooms on that little bridge that I think are the coolest part uh, of, the, of the building as far as student study spaces go. If you're sitting in one of those little study rooms there, it's marked number 10 on this. Yeah. You can look over the Great Hall on one side and figure out what's going on over in the atrium on the other side. So you're going to have a great view. You're going to be right in the center of all the action right there. So that's kind of the layout. Uh, just to kind of give you some pictures of what it would look like in person. This is the view when you come in the front door from, from the Oval. Uh, the Dean's office is there behind the, the glass wall on the right. There's a donor wall on the left thanking everybody. If you look down the hallway there on the far left, you'll see the uh, Beta Gamma Sigma key, which is our honor society key. And that whole area there, you can't see it from this rendering, but that's all student study space and gathering space for students to interact with one another. If you look straight down the hall on the left, uh, you'll notice there's a ticker and that ticker wraps around a coffee shop that anchors the atrium space. And so here we are down and standing in front of the coffee shop, um, the big board there with the KELS uh, logo on it. That's a big video board where we'll be able to put up announcements and run programs and presentations. Those are the team rooms up there uh, to the right of it. You see on the second floor, uh, the big glass wall there is open to the open cart courtyard. If you look down uh, toward the Great Hall, you'll see there's a fireplace there, a two-sided fireplace that divides those spaces be a great gathering spot there, particularly on a cold night. Not like tonight, it feels like, uh, like spring, but uh, on cold December nights, it's going to be a cool place to sit. Here's a look back, standing in front of that fireplace, looking back toward the, the front of the atrium. You see the coffee shop there. You see people sitting on uh, the social, social stairs. 
which is a, a key architectural feature there, again, to get people to congregate. Here's a little closer look at that. Uh, the glass walls on the second floor, those are the faculty offices up there. So some of the faculty will have great views down to see all the action going on in the atrium. Here's a look at the courtyard in that direction. You'll see there's a neat little overhang on the second floor across the way. If you look through the courtyard up on the top, you'll see uh, some gathering spaces, a couple students sit, sitting up there in this rendering looking down. Yeah, and we're down in uh, the Great Hall. Uh, on the left is the, what is now currently uh, the old auditorium space. Uh, this hall is actually uh, to the north, and on the right will be the two new large tiered classrooms. Now the architects are having fun with me. They put my name on that lecture hall and I do not have the asking uh, donation to, to do that. That's not going to happen. So they're, they're, making, they're making fun of the dean with that. But uh, we'd love to get that space named and uh, put somebody's name on there because it's a very, very cool space. And I'll show you what it looks like inside in just a bit. Here's another look uh, if you're standing on the west, looking back toward the east, you see the fireplace on this side, uh, the lecture halls to the right and the new rooms are there on the left. This is the uh, lecture hall from the inside. Uh, so it'd be a tiered space. It will seat over 200 students. Um, hopefully everybody notices the economic graphs up on the board there. Everything will be state of the art in terms of electronics. Uh, we'll have video lecture capture in all the rooms and all the latest G whiz bang uh, electronics for presentations. So that's gonna be a really cool space. It's gonna be a, a space we very definitely need. This is the, uh, one of the new rooms. This is the case room. It's a very uh, tight horseshoe type space. So here I think we probably see uh, Dr. Fogg teaching her law classes in here and some of our management faculty who like to use the case method. They would be using this room. We call it the, the case, case study room. This is what one of the uh, smaller and middle sized classrooms look like. They'll be flat but they're not necessarily gonna look like the classrooms uh, most of us sat in when we were here uh, in the Kels College of Business. You'll see this rendering shows uh, the professor in the middle of the room with uh, these collaboration stations instead of the old armchair desk sitting in, in rows with a, a whiteboard or a chalkboard in front of us. So the rooms are gonna be flexible. Everything's gonna be on wheels. Things are gonna move around. And the reason for that is because you teach business differently today than we did in the past. It's a lot of group work, a lot of interaction, a lot of role playing cases. So in order to get this engagement, we're gonna to have to make sure we've got functional spaces, the right equipment, the right furniture in order to give our students the best 21st century business education that we can. And so a lot of thought has gone into the design of the shape and the sizes and the equipping of these rooms. It's going to look different on the outside as well. So this would be if you're standing across uh, across the street, maybe coming out of Mormons. I don't know. Maybe some of you have done that. And you're looking back across Broadway. Uh, that would be what the building would look like. It's got that really cool glass tower there uh, facing the west. And what I'm, what I'm really uh, proud of is that when you come in down Broadway from the north, the first academic building that you run into on the Pitt State campus, it's Kels. And so this is going to be, you know, a landmark building in that sense. And we want it to stand out architecturally. And I think the, I think the planners have done a really good job doing that. Think about what that, that, that light tower is going to look like uh, at night if you're coming down Broadway uh, during, a, during a, let's say, the middle of a fall semester. And you can, when you drive by, you'll be able to look in there and you'll be able to see students act, acting and interacting in the, uh, in the Great Hall. So that's going to that's going to be really cool. So that that's what I've got in terms of the renderings on, on the slides. Now I would like to say this. So we actually had a meeting about the building this morning, and uh, what we're talking about, and we're exploring this idea, and this is a really exciting idea, even though we don't have all of our money identified. 
because of the current situation with uh, the economy kind of being in the dumps due to the COVID situation, there's the thought that if we put the building out for bid now, we would probably get a lower price than if we waited for the economy to heat back up. There's a lot of contractors out there that are gonna be looking for big projects. And if we could get in, the first, in that queue early on, we think we could get a better price. So we're looking at that. So you keep your eyes on the news. It may be that later in the spring or the summer that you're gonna hear some news that uh, the Kells project is going out for bid. That's not gonna mean that we have all the money raised. We're still gonna be actively raising money. And I know Holly's on the call, Holly Kent, our director of, uh, director of development for the business school. Uh, she's working very, very hard to continue to raise funds. We're all doing that and uh, we're gonna continue to do that. But obviously COVID has changed the way we're doing that and has slowed things down. So uh, we are gonna continue to work. We're gonna continue to push that. We're gonna raise as much money as quickly as we can. President Scott says this is the number one fundraising project on campus right now, and we're going to make this happen. I guarantee you we're going to make this happen. I know it's been slow. We've been working on it for a number of years, but it will come to fruition. So if you've got ideas or if you'd like to make a gift or another gift to the, to the, uh, the business school project, uh, feel free to talk to me at any time. Feel free to reach out to Holly. Uh, I'm sure she'd hang around and talk to anybody. Uh, privately after after the meeting tonight as well. So there you go. I'm hoping everybody does business like a gorilla and I'll be happy to answer any questions, Sean. Paul, one question that uh, was submitted prior to the Gorilla Gathering uh, is, uh, is the College of Business working on classes involving big data usage and related tools? Uh, examples, uh, Power Buy, Tableau, SQL, et cetera. Yep. Yep. I know what that question says. And uh, the answer is yes. We were working on it very uh, closely in spring. Uh, we had been talking with uh, an OPM, which is an online program manager, to help us jumpstart our course offerings in that area. Um, it's an outfit out of Austin, Texas. They were actually going to help us uh, teach classes in all those areas, and we were going to offer a uh, data analytics certificate. And in fact, uh, we have that approved. Lynn, help me out here. We have it approved at either the graduate or the undergraduate level, but not the other. So we have the courses on the books, uh, and we have the paperwork started, and what happened was COVID. And everything kind of got derailed as we we're trying to figure out how in the world do we get through the spring and then how in the world do we make the fall work. So once we can get through this, that will come back up to the top and uh, we'll continue to see what we can do on that. But uh, we do have the, the courses on the books, I think, for both the undergraduate and graduate versions of a data analytics certificate. And we're just lacking one approval to offer it at one, one of those levels. But uh, there are some good things happening there, and um, we just got we just got to get through this rough patch right now and figure out how to make it work. I think it's approved at the undergraduate level, and uh, grad school is asking for some more information. Okay, if I remember correctly. Yeah, I think I was remembering it the other way, but you may be right. I I often am confused. Yeah, I I'm, <laughs> am as well. David Hogard may know the answer to that. David, are uh, you here tonight? He's being shy. Oh. I am here. Yes, I am. I've been, been chatting with a couple of graduates. Sorry. <laughs> David, do you remember, uh, was it the undergraduate or the graduate data analytics certificate that's been approved? The data, I believe it's the undergraduate. Okay. Well, there you go. Hey, here's a question. If someone wanted to start the online MBA program, how long is that going to take them? Great question. And I can tell you the answer to that. If you took two classes every seven weeks for one year, you would have your MBA. If wow. you took one class every seven weeks, it would take you two years to complete it. Or you could split the difference. You could take one, two, one, two. You could alternate 
and get done in about a year and a half. So it's really at your own pace. Uh, the courses are offered in a format that's different than the traditional 15, 16 week semester. Classes are very fast. They are offered in seven week terms and there are five of those terms spaced out through the year. Essentially two in the fall, two in the spring, one in the summer. Okay, because I was gonna ask what sort of breaks do they get in between terms, but obviously if it's five, There's a larger break, uh, yeah. there's a larger break right now. Uh, they're finishing up along with everybody else this week with finals, and then they won't start again until uh, the spring semester begins in January. So there's a little bit of, of a break right now. There's also a little bit of a break uh, between the spring and the summer term, but between the two fall terms and the two spring terms, it's pretty quick. It's really quick. Lynn, you, you taught in the program. How, how quickly is that? I mean, it's pretty much like a week, right? Or maybe um, not even a week. No, I don't think it's a week. Um, the, uh, the, the seven weeks, um, so I just finished teaching that the second term of um, the second part of this term, and that ended on the Friday after Thanksgiving officially. Um, so yeah, it, 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 they smushed it right there. There's no, there's no time to waste in it. it it's, it, it's hard. It's, it's a killer year if you're doing it in a year. Um, and people are doing it with families and yeah. with jobs. And <laughs> I don't know how they're doing it, but they are. Pe people are doing it. I think uh, in December of our first year, December of 2019, one year ago, I think we had a dozen dozen folks who had finished up. In, they, they jumped in. They, were, they had been waiting for this program and they, they got it done in a year. Uh, this time, I think we had 25, 30 people uh, who graduated. So folks are... Folks are putting the time and effort in. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you, it, it, it's a high quality program. You're going to have to put the time in. You got to be dedicated and, uh, you know, be a self-starter to get it done. Paul, one question that just came through. Uh, what type of positions are the MBA graduates leaning towards? Well, it, you know, that, that's going to depend. If you're, if you're talking about the professional online MBA students, most of them are already employed and they're working on this degree as a place-bound student who cannot, come, cannot give up their job and come back to work. And so um, those, and many of them have their employers are, are picking up the tab to pay for their MBA. So uh, the, the, the companies and corporations are investing in their workers and helping them get their, get their MBA to further their career. So uh, those folks, and they're coming from a lot of backgrounds. We, we have folks in virtually every industry you can think of. Uh, we've had doctors, we've had uh, lawyers, we've had all kinds of folks working on the, uh, the online M MBA. Now the traditional MBA, I think is pretty much the standard. Uh, they're, they're interviewing with the larger corporations and firms uh, here in the region. Uh, many of them migrate up to Kansas City, obviously, uh, in place with some of the bigger firms up there. Uh, some folks uh, find themselves in Northwest Arkansas. We're having more and more folks placing down there with Walmart and many of the Walmart suppliers. Uh, folks are heading to Tulsa, and quite a few these days are, are going down to Dallas in the Metroplex. So, uh, you know, they're, they're all over. And uh, it, it's pretty much based on what their interest happens to be. Here's another good question. What can we do to get business students to go to PSU? Get our building completed. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think that's the number one, number one priority. Uh, it, it, it's very, very difficult to recruit students to a 70-year-old high school building. That's not very functional. Um, we had bats this year. Uh, we've got all kinds of problems with the heating and the air and the livestock. So uh, we, we got to get our building built. That, that's the number one priority. And, you know, I'm going to let Lynn answer a little about this because she has really been leading up our recruiting efforts. And she's on the front lines of this. And she can tell you what we hear from our, our students that we are recruiting. Um, you know, I think, I think the building is going to be a... Be a be a huge driver. When we were um, programming for the building, we went to um, a number of different institutions that had just built buildings, and the overwhelming finding was they underbuilt. 
no matter how big they thought they needed to be, they had underbuilt and they were, many of them were adding spaces on within four or five years. And not only did they see an increase in enrollment in the business school, they also saw it in other call in the other colleges at the university, whatever university it was um, that that was there. It's like with our plaster center, then you know the athletic events. When you're it, when you have those facilities and when you're dedicating um, energy and effort into those facilities, students see that as part of of who they are. Um, as to other things we can do, we've been uh, really working with um, FBLA and. Um, and um, DECA, which is uh, another business organizations in the high school, we're starting to work with some of the counselors um, as well in the area and, and the regional area, or, um, the local and, re and regional schools. <clears throat> it, it's, it's hard, it's, it's cyclical about enrollment. Right now, the state of Kansas, uh, the traditional age high school student that we, we typically appeal to, the, that's that's at best a flat population, if not declining. Now we're lucky because we're right here in the southeast corner of the state, in an hour and a half from Kansas City, um, and right next to Oklahoma and Arkansas and Missouri. And we've offered for years in-state tuition to those students, um, and that's really appealing. And we're offering um, discounted tuition to the state students in the state of Texas, and that really helps as well. Um, but those are some of our efforts. Uh, we had planned to go into the community colleges last spring, but again, COVID hit. <clears throat> and actually David Hogard, who's our academic advisor for KELS, um, we were gonna go in and at, enroll students at Johnson County Community College for Pitt State, um, actually go to the community colleges and enroll them in the university for the next term um, and work with some of those counselors as well. So we'll still do, we'll continue to plan on doing that once we're back to somewhat normal times um, and get out there at the high schools and spread the gospel of KELS. Um, it's, you can't get a better degree, I, I think. Um, I have two and uh, it's, it's, a pretty, it's a pretty solid degree. And, and you know, I might mention as well, and put, putting my Office of Admission hat back on because I worked there for about eight years, you know, our alumni are our best recruiters out there. I mean, we have wonderful recruiters who work in our admission office, um, but they cannot be all the places that they need to be. And so all of you on this call, obviously you're on this call because uh, uh, you have strong feelings uh, about the experiences that you had here at Pittsburgh State. And I can't tell you how important talking to uh, a niece or a nephew or a child or a grandchild or the kid next door about the experiences that you had at Pittsburgh State. Those are, uh, those are incredibly important conversations. And even if you're doing something as simple as saying, you know what, I know a person in the alumni office. I'm gonna give you his phone number and I'm gonna have you call him. And then I'm gonna get that person connected with the admission office or whoever they need to talk to, or Lynn or David or, or Dr. Grimes. So, um, you know, all of us here at Pitt State are more than, more than happy to do whatever it takes to help a prospective student make a connection. But those of you who are out there um, can help us a great deal. And I know our office, our social media, um, when we see great news, like what uh, Dr. Grimes shared earlier about uh, our MBA program, when we see great news out on social media, we share it. And I know many of you on this, on this call this evening are, uh, you follow our social media, share it to your page if you're someone who's on social media. That goes a long way as well. Uh, it's free, and uh, I know I do those sorts of things uh, whenever I can. So those are all those are all some various ways I think you can can share the news of uh, what's going on uh, in the College of Business as, as well as its state in general. You know, one of the biggest questions uh, prospective students and their parents have are, "What are your alumni doing? Are they succeeding?" And um, we can tell them yes, but it's great to be able to point to specific stories. So when you succeed as well, let us know so we can publish that and push that out on our social media, John picks it up. But that, that's a really big selling feature as well. It, it's a really great thing to talk about um, when somebody asks, what do your graduates do when, when, they, when they graduate? Are they successful? And so we wanna point those things out. Um, so send that stuff into us. And, you know, we have several different alumni awards that we give out through our office, and it's, it's impossible for 
us to know about everything that our, uh, our Pittsburgh State alumni are doing. So when you uh, make us aware of some of those individuals, and it might even be you, maybe you're sending, I, I've had many people send, send me their resume and uh, that ends up going into a pile of, of uh, potential award winners sometimes. So uh, don't, don't be shy. Um, you know, I've often heard that, you know, Pitts, and I think Pitt State does an excellent job of this, but we, we can still continue to share, we, we can brag on ourselves. It's okay. It's okay because others are out there bragging on themselves. So when we find out good news like this, we, we'd like to share that as well. So feel free to do that. John, I see a couple questions here about the building. I could, I could answer if we still have time. We sure do. And I know Lynn was, Lynn was responding online to some of these questions. Yeah. Um, but yes, absolutely. Yeah, well, I, I, there's a question about, is there space for Scythe, what used to be known as Scythe, now known as Enactus? Uh, yes, there is. There's a dedicated uh, student organization room right on the first floor, right across from the dean's office, right behind the, um, the coffee shop, right in the center part of the, of the first floor. Uh, that will be available for all of our student organizations. But within that space, they will have some dedicated lockers and uh, spaces within that, that room uh, for our student organizations. So uh, we are thinking about the student organizations uh, as we're building the building. And I see uh, Mark's talking about uh, asking questions about virtual technology. Uh, and we didn't have a, we don't have a rendering of it, but one of those large classrooms there off the Great Hall uh, will be our mediated uh, lecture hall, and there will be a computer station at each class, at each student sitting uh, in there. Uh, we, we've, we, we did our tours of buildings around the country uh, last, last couple of years. There, we saw several of these. They look like something off of Star Trek, you know, where the computer monitors will rise up out of the desk and uh, the, the professor up at the front can throw one screen, you know, to any, any screen or sets of screens in the room. Uh, so that software is out there. It's available. Uh, we've been saving money in order to make that happen. Uh, so, uh, yeah, we're, we're planning on doing all that. With regard to the online, uh, today we we're visiting with the architects. One of the changes we want to make to the floor plan is to include a, uh, a, distance studio where folks can go in and uh, professionally record their videos with a green screen and all the all the bells and whistles necessary to make much more professional uh, online classes and hybrid classes. So we're going to build that and it's going to be located right up on the second floor, right in the middle of that faculty community so everybody will have access to it. So yeah, we're, we're, uh, we've been thinking about all of these things and we're going to take everything that we've learned from this year of the COVID and uh, do what we can to, to make it work going forward. One question is, what are we doing to recruit Kansas kids? And I know when I worked in the admission office, there was a, there was a business day where we would invite um, students from, from high schools within driving distance. Is there still something like that that goes on? No, we, we, had, some, we had some issues with that. We had, uh, unfortunately, we had some high school teachers that would just drop their kids off and we, we babysat them for the day. And we, we didn't think we were getting out of it what we wanted to. Mm -hmm. So uh, we've been, so what we've done is we kind of flipped that around. Instead of bringing them to us, we've been going to them. And that, that would be the work Lynn has been doing with uh, Future Business Leaders of America, uh, making sure we have a presence at their state competition. Not only should we be going to the state competition here in Kansas, she's also been to the one in Missouri. Isn't that right? And um, so we're, you know, we're, we're, we're going out to them a little bit more than we did in the past. We've been trying to figure out the best way to get kids on campus. And we think that the FBLA angle may be one way to do that because they do put on competitions and events and we would love to host those. And so we're working on ways to figure out how to get kids to campus and get them here. But if they're here, we want them engaged and we want them to experience a feel for what Pitt State is all about. So uh, that's the plan. When we get to the point where we can start bringing buses back to campus with kids, we're gonna to try to have something. Great. Are there other questions out there uh, that, that anyone would like to ask uh, in person here? I don't see any more on the feed, on the chat. Paul, can you 
pull up the uh, student space and maybe show Brittany where that is, the Enactus and the... Well, if someone would share the space back, uh, the screen back with me. It, you should have access, Paul. All right, let's see if we can do that. There you go. All right, so everybody see Gus? Mm -hmm. All right, let me um, see if I can get him to go back. All right, there is the first floor. So if you look at if you look at this, um, it's number eleven, right there in the middle. So you'll see if you come in the main door, which is labeled number twenty-five. You come in there and you go down the hall, and it's going to be the first little short hallway on your left, and you'll pass a small team room which could also be used for interviews. It's a, it's a space that would be really great if somebody wanted to do uh, an interview within the business building. And next to that, number 12, is a small conference room. And then the space dedicated for student organizations is 11. So those students will have space to uh, all of 11. They'll have access to the conference room 12 and also to that small team room 10. So. Uh, Excellent. Any other questions? And Lynn, we identified space today about where we can put the Professional Sales Center and I'll be excited to share that with you at some point. Outstanding. Well, I, I will tell you everyone that we will send a follow-up email uh, after uh, probably, probably tomorrow, if not tomorrow, um, first thing on Monday. And it will include a, uh, a link uh, to uh, the recording of, of uh, this evening. And, you know, we'd certainly encourage you to share that with anyone that you think might be interested. Uh, we'll also send it out to anybody who had said they were interested in this and, and were unable to make the call. And uh, we'll include some, some links, uh, whatever Dr. Grimes and Dr. Murray would like for us to include. We're happy to do that. And, and we'll include... Uh, uh, many things uh, regarding what our office is doing as well. Um, one more question, is there a computer lab anywhere? Great question. The short answer, no. Uh, we felt like that that space is being completely underutilized in, in the building right now. We have a lot of our first floor dedicated to uh, large computer labs and they're primarily today being used for classes where a professor wants to go in and give an exam to everybody electronically, uh, or they want to do some type of spreadsheet work or some other computer work. Uh, so there's not as much drop-in use of the lab as there used to be because everybody's carrying around their laptop and their tablet and their phone. So most students probably have two or three ways to access uh, what they need on the network uh, in their backpack. And there's less need for those spaces. And so we did not want to allocate valuable space to, uh, to that function. However, as I mentioned earlier, that large uh, tiered room at the north uh, west corner of the building, it will be a mediated room. And if we found out that we did need to have some open lab hours, we could use that space when it's not scheduled for a class. But since most of our large group work in, with using computers is occurring during class time, we felt that that was the best investment. Most students are using their phones even to take tests and to write papers on. I um, go down to the uh, Einstein's at the Student Center regularly, and I'd see the same student there typing away. She had a little keyboard and she'd be typing a paper on her phone. So uh, we're seeing more and more of that happening and it, it's, it's just going to continue to go that route. Now, Paul, do you have a prop there in your office that you were going to show on camera? Well, you know, Scott had asked about my, my license plate, right? And that, isn't that a cool license plate? Thank you, Scott, for getting that for me. That is really cool. And, you know, it's the Pitt State plate, and he got it personalized with my name, which is just outstanding. So you can't get exactly this one, but I've heard you can still get Pitt State plates. Is that right, John? 
You can. And, and in fact, you can't even get them with that raised red lettering anymore. They've changed it to, to being printed on. But I just wanted to take a, a moment and mention this because I know there are many of you on the call tonight who either live in Kansas, Missouri, or Oklahoma. And we just launched the Pitt State Plate in Oklahoma uh, just in the last few months. And the reason I like to mention this, you know, we've talked a lot tonight about, you know, how can we let others know about Pittsburgh State in general? Well, these license plates are a great marketing tool uh, when you see those, when you see those uh, floating around on the fronts and backs of vehicles. And, you know, we're, we're particularly jealous of the Oklahoma plates because we were kind of able to design those from the ground up and they're red. They're red and yellow and they say uh, OAG, AAG, once a gorilla, always a gorilla on them. So, um, you know, but not only are these great marketing tools, but these allow us to raise scholarship dollars for new incoming students. And so we have something called the Alumni Legacy Scholarship. And so for incoming students who are children or grandchildren uh, of a Pittsburgh State University graduate, um, they are potentially eligible for the scholarship. And, uh, you know, in this day and age, scholarship dollars make a huge, huge difference. I mean, you might have a student looking at schools and they're looking at Pitt State and maybe they're looking at, you know, one of our, one of our main rivals and they might end up going where they can get the most money. And so, you know, every $500 or uh, every even $250 uh, can, make, can make a difference. And I see some folks responding now saying, I had that scholarship uh, my first year and uh, folks who've gotten this new plate. So um, if you've been on the fence about getting one of these um, and you live in one of those three states, we'd certainly encourage you to consider it. Um, just knowing that the dollars um, go towards scholarships for new incoming freshmen. That really helps us out uh, a great deal. So and they may help you drive a little bit better. My mom has one and she <laughs> said she's always cognizant of not angering people as she's driving because she has that. Hey, hey, John, I see some folks are telling us they got their uh, Oklahoma tag yes, in the mail. Yes, so yes. we got to get some of those on social media. Yeah. You know, they um, we started that process so long ago and the state of Oklahoma was running running behind because of COVID and they, they mailed them out. I think they hit the mailboxes uh, just before or just after Thanksgiving. So yeah, we're, we're very excited about that. So thank you so much to everybody out there who was able to, uh, to support the university with this. So I've got a lot of stuff to give away here, folks. And you probably wonder, well, we're not in person. How is this going to work? Well, we're going to mail it to you. Okay. Um, we're going to mail it to you. So I've got um, a list here of individuals who are on the call tonight. And, and I think most folks are still on the call. So I'm going to go down my list. Uh, we've randomly chosen some names uh, of individuals to uh, win some of these items. So I'm just going to kind of go down my list in alpha order uh, of who was chosen. So it looks like uh, Ashley Bingham. Um, Ashley, you won a, a Pitt State Cup. So we're going to be uh, getting that in the mail to you. So Congratulations to you. It's a little less exciting virtually than it is in person, but you know, feel free to, <laughs> feel free to clap in your chair. Uh, we've got another Pitt State Cup, and uh, that's actually going to go to Ashley Burke. So, uh, Ashley, congrats uh, to that as well. There's so, a theme going on, isn't there? A, yeah. What? The last if your name? name if, you're, if your name is Ashley, Ashley, you get a cup. Oh, yes. Well, I told you I was going to get on my alphabetical list. So, all right, so we've got a Pitt State cutting board here. Uh, it can be for decorative use or you can actually use it, whatever your preference is. And uh, Tim Blevins, Tim Blevins from Claremore. So uh, congratulations uh, to you, Tim. Uh, you've got a brand new cutting board for Christmas. Uh, oh, this is cool. This is new. And it's too big for me to roll out, but this is a Pitt State blanket. Very, very, uh, very nice, very soft. It's a stadium blanket, it's quite large. And uh, this goes to uh, Sherry uh, David uh, in Mustang, Oklahoma. So um, I know you're on the call, so uh, you're gonna have a blanket coming in the mail. It will complement her new license tag. It will, it will. So uh, very good, so we've got that. All right, got a Pitt State mug here. And uh, this is going to uh, Emily Jardis. Uh, Emily's in uh, Tonganoxie. 
Congratulations to you, Emily. These are uh, Pitt State uh, Alumni Constituent Relations coasters. They're real nice stone coasters. And uh, they are going to, where this print is so small. See, I had, to, I had to put on my readers for this, try to read everything. Uh, Carrie Javin, uh, Carrie and Kurt uh, are in Heath, Texas. So uh, right. thanks for joining us tonight. And uh, you guys are gonna get some coasters in the mail. Okay, so uh, once a gorilla, always a gorilla koozie with sunglasses uh, inside of them. And uh, that is going to our friend, Dean Kennedy. So congratulations to uh, Dean and Cheryl. And I think he's got some grandsons on the call. We've got another set of those uh, same things. And um, those are going to go to uh, Tommy Elms. Tommy's in Overland Park. So uh, congratulations to Tommy. You'll look cool in those, Tommy. <laughs> All right. Linda Peak from Andover, Kansas. Linda, you're getting a uh, Pitt State calendar. So uh, you're going to get one of those. Congratulations. Scott Robinson in Olathe. Scott, uh, you're going to get a calendar as well. So congrats uh, to you, Scott. And Scott attended our uh, fried chicken event. We talked about the 350 meals that we took up to, uh, to Kansas City. So Scott was, uh, Scott was part of that. Roger Wynn is off the call, but, but he, he got one of these Pitt State license plates. So we're going to we'll get that in the mail to... Uh, Roger. Uh, Dana Vitt, uh, you've got a uh, Pitt State license plate holder. So, hey, that can go around your new Oklahoma Pitt State license plate. So, congratulations to you. Brittany Squire is on the call. Brittany, this is a, uh, this is a cooler, a cooler bag. So, uh, We'll get that in the mail to you. Now we've got some stuff that the College of Business gave us as well. Just about everybody's gonna end up with something tonight. So Paul, what are these called? I forget. Those are gators. These and are gators. And so I can model it right yes. here, right here. So we've got a gator to give away and that is going to uh, Herb Stevens. Herb, thanks for joining us tonight. The father of the, findus, the famous Mindy Kloniger, who is our director of career services here on campus. Hey. Let's see here. Hey, before using the gator, make sure you wash it. They uh, tend to bleed red if you don't and not the good kind of bleeding crimson and gold and david hogarth can tell you all about that oh yes i heard dave had lots of pink clothes these days all right here's another gator this goes to uh, ruth dooling and in, in gerard ruth uh glad you're on the call tonight ruth is also uh on our alumni association board of directors so appreciate her there Kathy Kibler, congratulations. You're gonna get one of the Gators as well. Uh, Lotus Lee, out of California. So uh, you're gonna get one of these as well. Congratulations to you. Just a couple more things here, folks. So, so this is a Kells College of Business apron for your cooking and your barbecuing. Lee Murray, congratulations. <laughs> and then our other one goes to Charlie Myers. Charlie's on the call. Charlie uh, 
a member of our foundation board for a long time. So thank you, Charlie, for all your support. Charlie will look good in that. Yes, he will. And last but not least, Alan Hauser. And I apologize, maybe it's Hauser. Uh, we've got this great Kells College of Business knapsack for you. And so we will uh, get that in the mail as well. Wow, this feels like Christmas. Thank you for all those goodies, Paul. You're welcome. So I'm trying to see if any other questions came in. I don't see anything else. So, well, friends, um, thank you for your time tonight. Um, you know, we uh, would much rather see you in person, but hey, this is, this is a, a lot better than not being able to see you at all. And as I mentioned, it really allows us to go into detail about some of these uh, wonderful programs that we have on campus here at Pittsburgh State. So really appreciate Dr. Grimes taking the time to talk to us tonight, uh, Dr. Murray uh, taking the time to talk to us tonight as well. Um, great folks uh, working uh, for our College of Business, uh, Holly Kent, uh, David Hogard, and uh, many other wonderful individuals, and many of them gorillas, which uh, even makes it a little bit sweeter. So uh, as I mentioned, we'll send out a follow-up. Uh, so certainly if uh, you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to my office or don't hesitate to reach out to uh, the College of Business. We will do our best to answer any questions you might have, but share this recording. Share this recording with, uh, with anyone that you would like, anyone that you think might be interested uh, in the College of Business or in Pitt State in general. And um, as, as always, if there's anything that my office can do for you, um, we would be more than happy to help out, more than happy to help out. And even if you're muted, everybody from, from the place you are right now, you know what I'm gonna say, all together, we can say, once a gorilla, always a gorilla. So friends, thank you for joining us. Um, we wish you a very happy and safe holiday season and um, hoping that everyone has a much smoother and easier 2021. So thank you again and uh, have a wonderful night. We'll talk to you again soon. It's good seeing everybody. Bye everybody.